On today's episode, I am going to take a look at three growth stocks that I like a lot, and I actually just purchased them this week. Like many of my viewers, I put money into the market on a weekly base, on, on a timely basis. For me, I put money to work every week. So every week I'm looking for where to put that money to work. And this week I decided to be these three stocks. And what I'm hoping is, I, I know some of my viewers put it on a weekly basis as well. So this might just give them other options to look at before purchasing their stocks. And the three stocks are going to be one that's in the e-commerce, that's going to be Mercado Libre, one that's in the gaming industry, that's going to be Nintendo, and one that's in the fitness industry, and that's Peloton. So in today's episode is going to be broken down into the following. For each business, we're going to look at three points, and three points that I believe are super important. The first point is to try to understand the business, try to understand where that money is coming from. So we're going to take a look at its revenue breakdown and see what kind of products they have. Second, I, I need to understand that this company, this business is going to continue to grow. So I want to take a look at expectations for the, for the company, for the business in the upcoming years. So it's still expected to grow strong revenue growth. And finally, I want to take a look at the business financial health. Are, are they, do they have a lot of cash? Do they have a lot of debt? How is their financial health right now? And I do believe three, these three points are very important to understand. So like always, if you are new to my channel, if you are a long-term investor and if you like to learn about growth stocks, make sure to hit that subscribe button. To all my returning viewers, thank you so much for the support. It truly means a lot. Like always, if you guys want to ever get in contact with me, you can find me on YouTube comments, on Twitter, on my Discord channel, on Twitch, on my website at josenaharo.com. And like always, thank you guys for the support. But remember, all of this is my opinion and by no means am I a professional. So make sure to talk to a financial advisor before making any decisions. So guys, don't forget to hit the thumbs up on the video and let me know what are some of the companies you purchased this week, if any, or are you guys just still sitting in cash? I'm waiting for more of a dip. All right, so the first stock we're going to take a look at is Melly. Uh, Melly is an e-commerce company and they are in Latin America. Um, this is ticker M-E-L-Y, uh, a very easy way, and we're going to take a look at their products, but right now, just a quick overview if you have never heard of Melly. The best place to start off would be like an Amazon of Latin America. Um, and also before we continue this this Sunday, so tomorrow at 8.30, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I am going to go live on Twitch. And you can find my Twitch information on my comments or my description. And every Sunday I go, I go live. And if you guys want to have questions, feel free to come and talk to me. If you guys want me to take a look at any stocks, that's what I normally do during these, these live streams. Um, and it's just to interact with the community. All right, so Melly, Melly right now has a market cap of about $51 billion. And in the past month, I want to see how, how this company has reacted. In the past month, it has dropped from its peak close to 15%. So it, it does, it ha we can see there has been a nice correction. Year to date, it still has done amazing returns. It has done 69% on returns. And if we were looking at the peak, it was closer to 100%. So we can see, unfortunately, if you purchased around August and September, you might be a little bit on the red right now. But any other time before that, you're most likely on the green. One thing I do want to say is my investment style, I dollar cost average. So I this is what happens when I purchase. And this is why I believe dollar cost averaging is so important. I might have bought super expensive if I bought in August. And I think I did. I honestly don't remember what stock, what stock price I initially bought in. But... I, I am I did buy more on on Friday and Friday is a lot cheaper than it was. So with that dollar cost averaging, it helps me out with my returns. It helps me build up a position over time, especially since these are companies I'm gonna I'm gonna build a long term investment for. All right, so now that we see Melly and their price performance, we saw their market cap. And to me, $50 billion, if this market continues to grow in Latin America, I can see this for me being easily a multi-bagger company in the upcoming years all right so now let's try to take a look at what mercado libre does and what are the products it makes so mercado libre has pretty much two main markets the fame the first market um the first product is the overall online marketplace and this is if you if you have a small business or if you want to sell products online you use their mercado libre marketplace 
Within their Mercado Libre marketplace, they also have their own shipping services. And with this shipping services, it helps them out with logistics on them not having to worry about, about uh, that country specifics postal service or other postal programs. The second product they have is the uh, the Mercado Pago, and this is their fintech system. So this is this one I would consider more if you guys are familiar with Square. Square would be the most appropriate understanding of them. They have like mobile point of sales. So you know when you go to a small business and they have like the chip readers, you can that's a Mercado Pago. Those are those point of sales. They also have like QR codes, prepaid cards. You can also do some form of loans or, or credit, credit card applications through Mercado Libre. And also have, um, I do believe it has digital wallets. So you can do like peer-to-peer -peer sending. All right, so now that we understand the products that Melly does, let's take a look at the countries they mainly hit. The three main countries that produce the most revenue for Mercado Libre are Mexico, Brazil and Argentina. They are expanding in other in other countries, also in Central America, but at the moment, those are the three main ones. And this is why I believe many investors are excited about Mali because it has this huge growth potential into other countries. All right, so now let's take a quick look at their most recent earnings to see their net revenue so we can see where that money is coming from. We already saw the products they hit, but now let's see how that is divided. So net revenues for Melly this past quarter, which was quarter two of 2020, and it ended in, I, I believe it was in June or July when they presented their earnings. So it's pretty free, recently. They, they made $878 million of revenue this quarter and that's up about 60 percent compared to same time last year some of you guys might be watching the video might be like 123 percent year to year growth that is looking if if the currency exchange was neutral throughout the time but it's not the currency exchange changes over time so counting that currency rate exchange exchange rate is actually up 63 percent which is a big value out of that 878 582 so over half of it comes from their commerce platform which is what i mentioned that that shipping and the online marketplace the other part the other 297 came from fintech and we can see there is some strong growth happening in both these markets but the one that took the biggest jump was the commerce revenue a lot more people were buying online due to the whole COVID situation all right, so now let's take a look at their future growth. First, we can see the blue line is Mercado Libre's revenue growth, and we can see this company is expected to grow its revenue dramatically in the upcoming years. Another thing we're seeing is Melly is almost profitable. It's kind of it, it, it's expected to be profitable pretty soon. It has been profitable in the past, but I'm pretty sure due to the uh, COVID-19, this right now has taken a few hit expenses, but it's expected to be profitable within the next year. Forecasted revenue growth for Melly is expected to be 29.2% on average annually. So within the next three years, it's saying on average within the year, it'll grow 29.2% each year. But that doesn't mean each year will grow 29.2%. Maybe one year it might grow like 50%, maybe one year it might grow like 29, and maybe one year will grow, I don't know what would the math work, but you will see the average between those three years will be 292 That is amazing growth. People, many people consider a growth company, a company that grows 15% or more annually. So growing 29.2 is definitely a high growth. They're also expected to be pro, um, to increase their earnings at a strong value throughout the upcoming years. The final thing we're going to take a look at Melly is their financial health. Uh, I want to make sure we, one thing we saw, this company is already profitable. So since it is profitable, I'm not going to be so hard on them when I'm looking at their, at their balance sheet. Right now, Melly has non-current debt of about 800 million and current debt about 600 million. So that's about $1.4 billion of total debt. But look, this company has $1.6 billion of cash and cash equivalents and $2.26 billion of current investments. So Melly has plenty of cash to pay off all its debt and more. So to me, this is a very, very strong balance sheet. So now we took a look at Melly. Let me just talk about some of the, let me just give my thoughts of Melly and why I'm so excited about it. So Melly is in markets that I believe will continue to grow. Melly has, is in the e-commerce business and is in the fintech business. Two markets that I, I foresee continue growth and we can see that based on the expectation growth that analysts give it. The second thing is Melly right now is 
I would consider profitable. It did take a few hits this year. I'm sure that's due to COVID-19, but it's something that will be profitable within the next 12 months. So that's another great thing. And finally, we see a company with a very, very strong balance sheet. So all these things are things I'm very bullish on. The overall markets that they're hitting, the type of growth they are seeing, the type of growth they're expected to see, and a very strong balance sheet, what's there not to like about Melly? And for me, if you guys don't know, I have multiple tier stocks. I have tier one, which are my favorite stocks, and those are usually my biggest positions. Then I have tier three, which are companies that are not leaders right now, but I do believe that they are in some disruptive market that in the upcoming years can be a huge potential winners. And these are usually my smaller positions. Tier two are the ones I see in between them. They're, they're my middle position. Again, all three tiers are companies that I believe will give me better returns than the overall market. So a lot of people will be like, Jose, why do you have three tiers? Why don't you just invest in tier one? All of them, all of those tier threes are ones that I expect will beat the market. So for me, I, 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 I believe that that works for me and it does. Melly will be a tier two stock. So I don't think it would ever be a tier one. The only one in the e-commerce world right now that I can remember that's in my tier one is C. And that is because it's in the gaming world as in the gaming marketplace as well. But Melly is in, a, is in route to become a tier two in my position. All right, so the second company we're gonna take a look at is Nintendo. And Nintendo right here in the United States is traded over the counter as ticker NTDOY. If you're in different markets or if you're in different countries, the ticker might be a bit different. But over the counter here in the United States, we can purchase it as ticker NTDOY. And I'm pretty sure everybody knows about Nintendo, Super Mario, Pokemon, um, Nintendo 64, GameCube, Nintendo Switch. Um, so we can see Nintendo right now is worth $70 market price if you're buying Nintendo, the ticker NTDOY. Right now, Nintendo has a market cap of close to $60 billion. And it's it's pretty in line with like Activision. And I, I remember I did, and all these companies that I'm actually I'm doing right now, I've done a real analysis on them. So if you guys definitely want to check them out, make sure to check out my other videos. But Nintendo, let's take a look at the past month performance. So it did peak around $70 and it dropped only 5% during that correction. So it, it's not seeing much, it did not see much of a correction as the other other companies we have we, we've seen today and some other software companies. So that to me is pretty impressive. Year to date, it has returned 38% to investors. That's still way better than the overall market. The SPY has returned only like three, four percent, I believe. I don't know after this correction if it's gotten any better. So let me just take a quick look at that. Year to date, the overall market has returned 2.83%. I don't know how I do it. I just do it, right? Let's take a look at how Nintendo makes money. So we now know it's that video game company, but let's try to understand its sales. For this physical year, for this most recent quarter, which ended, I believe, uh, about two months ago. So most of the earnings I'm taking a look at, uh, August 6th. So not, uh, about a month ago, they reported their most recent earnings. And they reported net, net sales of 358 billion yen. Compared to the same time last year, that is up 108%. This is insane. This is why video game companies right now are doing amazing. And Nintendo, even though Nintendo is not truly releasing a new platform, I do believe the, the amount of, of or, organic, organic advertisement from Nintendo Switch and all the games that they're coming out is just being shown here with this 108% year-to-year growth. Out of that 358 billion most of it comes from dedicated video game and platforms and that includes hardware software downloadable downloadable versions of package software so it includes both the video game system and the video games and this makes up 344 billion yen out of that 358 so we can see most of it actually comes from there i want to say that's over 90 percent Another more sport, another small position comes from mobile IP related income, and I did believe uh, IP means intellectual property, and that's a very important thing. 
Mobile games is up 32% compared to the same time last year. And I do believe this is such a huge untapped market for Nintendo. And one of the reasons I'm super bullish right now with most games going with most gaming worlds going to a mobile free to play type games like Call of Duty, Mobile, um, Fortnite, and all these other games where you probably where you just buy to buy packages and loot boxes. Nintendo, I believe, has has not tapped that market that well. Right now, I think they only have Mario Kart Mario Kart Tours on mobile, but they, they can do a Super Smash Brothers. They can do a Mario 64. They, they have so much potential of, of doing games on their mobile IP that I do believe this is going to be a huge growth for them if they push. And that's my main, my main reason for being so bullish in Nintendo right now. They also have playing cards, but playing cards makes less than 1% of their total revenue. Uh, right now, I, I do believe most cards are going to digital gaming games as well. Um, and that's down 37%, but that's 0.2 billion yen out of that 358. So that's not even 0.1% of revenue. All right, so now that we saw the products that Nintendo hits and we saw where they make their money and we saw that it had crazy revenue growth, let's take a look at what their future is expected. In their future, unfortunately, analysts are not expecting Nintendo to do much better. And I do believe the reason analysts don't expect Nintendo to do much better is because they're not releasing a new console right now, like Xbox. So right now, analysts expect the future growth for Nintendo to be negative 3.8%. And I kind of do agree with them in some of these parts. But at the same time, I do believe if Nintendo switches, and I do believe this is why Nintendo is not it's not talked about so much compared to the other gaming the other gaming things. But Nintendo, if it does hit that mobile IP, I do believe it's something that would help the revenue for this company continue to grow. I mean, we saw 108 percent year um, year over year this in, in hardware sales compared to the same time last year. So all those people that just bought new systems, that bought new games, they're most likely going to buy new games in the future as well. Another thing we can see is Nintendo is profitable and their margins are expected to be um to what they're at so based on analysts it doesn't look like that great of a company um but this is just one of my internal feelings internal guts telling me nintendo is looking pretty good right now and arc investment is actually purchasing a lot of nintendo at the moment so now let's take a look at nintendo's balance sheet they have a balance sheet that's amazing the first thing i want to say is when i see a balance sheet like this where they have no debt at all nothing at all is a company that I do not have to worry about anytime soon. And it's in the market that I believe will continue to grow. So for me, this is this is amazing. Um, so for me, Nintendo is another one that I do want it to be tier two in my portfolio. And like let's let's do a quick overview like I did for Mali. So with Nintendo, it's in a market market I feel I'm very bullish on. The video game industry is a market that is going to continue to grow. And with Nintendo having such strong IP and barely hitting that mobile IP uh, mobile world, it has huge potential to growth. I, I do believe um, it, it has a great balance sheet. And because analysts do not expect much from this company, I think it's a hidden gem at the moment. All right, so the final one we're going to take a look at is Peloton. And a lot of people are going to be like, Jose, this is insane. Why are you looking at a business company that has a huge, that is just a bike with an iPad on it and it's charging so much money? And this to me is, that's how I used to think about this company back then. And I just looked at their most recent earnings and it did amazing. It honestly changed my opinion on them. So again, with this, it's at its all time highs, but I did purchase late Friday. So I got in on that dip, which is about 8% down compared to its peak. And we might be like, oh, so right now, let me talk about Peloton. Peloton, you guys might know it as that, as that bike that you, you pay a subscription and then it's a super expensive bike to do your workouts in. Right now it has a market cap of $23.8 billion. And it, it took a big hit today after earnings. After earnings is actually after earnings, it's down about 14% from its peak on Friday morning. On Friday morning, it jumped all the way up to $97.90. And at the end of the day, it's down 14%. 
So Peloton is one that I don't mind dollar cost averaging in. So let's try to understand where Peloton makes its money. And this is ticker PTON. So the first thing is Peloton this quarter revenue grew 172% compared to the same time last year. They generated $607 million. Out of that $607 million, $485 million came from connected fitness segment. This is about 80% of the total revenue. And this includes like their hardware sales, their bikes, they have treadmills and um, apparel. The second selection of their revenue is 121 million that comes from subscription services and this is up a hundred percent year over year it makes up the remaining 20 percent of revenue and right now these are the number so we see a huge demand of their products and they're not only in the biking world right they're also in the they're also in the treadmill game and they're also have if you have their subscription they have workouts inside the subscriptions that you can do with free weights so it's pretty much a gym at home so next uh, this is another so we saw a huge growth in their revenue and we saw that they're not only a biking company they hit other sectors but to me this is the biggest portion about it member engagement member engagement in quarter four grew with 24.7 average monthly workouts per connected fitness subscription versus 12 workouts in the same period last year so we can see members are using their are, are working out more using this product another thing that i like during their earnings they mentioned that they pretty much cut off most of their advertisement because advertisement wasn't needed they were seeing huge demand they currently have a backlog on products but most of it is all coming from organic growth so people are just talking about peloton everybody now knows the company and it's becoming a a, a business a, a in-house name so that alone is showing just the amazing growth that this company can continue to see all right so now that we know the products they hit we know where they make their money so next let's take a look at the future growth for peloton we can see this crazy revenue growth this is insane a, a true uh, high growth company right now it is not profitable for the year but it is expected to be profitable within the next two years i think even within this year it might end up profitable so right now peloton is expected to grow its annual revenue growth 27.7 percent annually so we can see this is another high growth company it's also expected to grow its earnings at super high levels we can see by 2021 they are expected to be profitable and every year after that they are the profitabilities maintain now let's take a look at their at their past at their balance sheet so peloton right now has about 500 and 500 million dollars of non-current debt and 46 million of current debt so close to 550 million dollars of total debt they have about 1.1 billion dollars in cash and about 700 million in current investments so they, they have enough cash to pretty much pay off their total debt and still be good they're already profitable they are in a business that has um that has backlogs they have a huge marketplace right now and their name their brand is amazing so what's there not to like about peloton so for me peloton on un unlike the other two companies i can't see this being a tier two for me i do see it being a tier a tier three so that means it has huge growth it has good balance sheets it's in the market i believe will continue to grow very similar to my other tiers but i just it, it's a tier three because it's a market that I, I feel it's not one market i'm too i'm too invested in um but i do see that this will be a company that will continue to beat the market and can be a very huge winner for me in the long term of things and even a small position this is what i believe even and i i've seen it even a small position if it's a multi-bagger can help your portfolio grow by by dramatic numbers so I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Like always, make sure to subscribe, make sure to hit the thumbs up and let me know what you guys thought about this company.